If you've lived or traveled along our coast or shorelines, chances are that you've seen a tidal salt marsh. But do you really know what a tidal salt marsh is, how they were formed, and why they are more important than ever? Tidal salt marshes are wetland ecosystems that develop between uplands, such as forests or urban areas, and the low energy intertidal zones of the lower estuary or sheltered marine coastline. The salt marsh intertidal zone is the land area covered by salt water at high tide and exposed to the air at low tide. This tidal cycle happens twice each day. The tidal salt marsh exists worldwide, but particularly between the middle and the high latitudes. And the tidal salt marshes we see today most of those started forming after the end of the last ice age about 12,000 years ago. During the last ice age, so much water was locked up in the ice sheets that sea level was about 400 feet lower than it is today. When the glacial sheets started to melt, sea level rose and coastal and low-lying areas worldwide became flooded with seawater. About 9,000 years ago, the Delaware Bay, once a river valley surrounded by hardwood forests, became flooded, and the terrestrial plant and forest communities that once dominated the valley were drowned. This same scenario played out all over the world. Eventually, the fast pace of the rising seas slowed as the ice sheets reached the end of their melt. The flooded river valley, now the Delaware Bay, began to adjust to a new normal. The fresh water from the inland rivers and streams carried sediment load that were rich in nutrients and mixed with the salty ocean water. The fine sediments carried by these waters dropped out of the water column and accumulated in the low energy areas of the intertidal zone. In this nutrient-laden, salty mud, the seeds of salt-tolerant grasses germinated and colonized. The plant's root systems trapped even more sediment and held it in place, eventually creating peat. Over time and growth cycles, the plants thrived and the peat continued to accumulate. The surface elevation of the marsh was now able to keep pace with the slower rate of the rising seas. What was once an upland forest, reliant on fresh water supplies before the flooding, was transformed around 3,000 years ago into a new ecosystem, the tidal salt marsh. The Delaware Estuary's tidal salt marshes are found throughout the bay shores of New Jersey and Delaware from south of the Delaware Memorial Bridge to the confluence of the bay with the Atlantic Ocean, where the water is much saltier than in the upper reaches of the estuary. The tidal salt marsh plant community has adapted to tidal cycles, tidal range, and varying salinities. So two distinct vegetation zones have developed that are identified by the plants that grow there, the low marsh and the high marsh. The low marsh develops closest to the water's edge and along tidal creeks where it is flooded twice a day by the tides. The dominant plant species is smooth cordgrass, otherwise known as Spertina alteniflora. It can grow upwards of eight feet and spends about half of its life submerged in salty water, so it is extremely salt tolerant and has even adapted the ability to secrete salt. A shorter version of Spertina alterniflora grows at a slightly higher elevation where regular flooding is still experienced, but where the water levels are not quite as deep. The high marsh zone develops in the marsh's highest elevations between the low marsh and the uplands, where tidal inundation only occurs at the very highest of tides during a full moon or a new moon. Salt marsh hay, otherwise known as Spertina patens, or more recently as Sporobolus pomelis, is the dominant vegetation, and it reaches about 18 inches in height. 
Other common species found along the high marsh where it interfaces with the uplands is marsh elder and the common reed known as Phragmites, which has become quite invasive. Of course, there are many, many other species of beautiful plants to be found in a tidal salt marsh. A wide range of ecosystem services, such as shelter, food, nesting sites, and nurseries are also provided by tidal salt marshes. The network of tidal creeks that snake across the salt marsh are home to fish species, such as flounder and mullet. The muddy tidal flats in the low marsh are a haven to periwinkles, fiddler crabs, mussels and clams that filter water and keep dead and decaying plants and animals in check. In turn, they provide food for nesting and migratory birds. Small mammals tend to find shelter in the high marsh, who then become prey for larger birds and mammals. The salt marsh food web is complex. If one part of the food web disappears, the entire web is affected. For humans, the benefits of tidal salt marshes goes far beyond being merely aesthetic and recreational. They filter pollution and runoff from our upland areas. They protect our coastlines from erosion, and they act as the natural protective barriers to absorb wave energy and insulate our coastlines from the risks associated with storm surge and flooding. Yet in the Delaware estuary, we are losing tidal marshes at a rate of one acre per day. Their losses carry a high price tag, especially now as we face faster paced sea level rise and increasing storm intensities. We must all work together to protect, preserve, and restore this magical and valuable asset. Please visit our website at DelawareEstuary.org and go to Save the Estuary to find out how you can donate, volunteer, or become an estuary champion. Thank you.